Welcome to Business Dig. With me, I'm Deb Fry and Lisa Kanda, my co-host. We're going to be doing some things in the next few months on our podcast that I know you're going to love. Our show is Business Dig, and uh, be sure to stay tuned and share with your friends. We'd love to have lots of people on board for this one. We are sharing some tips and tools. We like to dig and find out information and share with business owners, not only to help them build their business and create some May momentum since we have been in a, a little bit of a quiet time here, but also if you're a business owner, a leader, a community person who wants to do something special for your folks of influence, and also if you want to champion something, some cause or something that you want to do for your business, your organization, and especially for your career. Begin your journey with us. We're going to provide some essential nuggets that we know you're going to enjoy and be able to use in your personal and professional life. I'm Dr. Deborah Fry. People call me Deb, and I am a leadership development specialist for Fryworks and Associates, and on our show today is my good friend and my co-host, Lisa Kanda, LK Advisors. Hello, Deb. Welcome. I am so excited that we are relaunching Business Dig. It's been quite some time. Uh, and now we get technology to where we are recording live where you actually see us. We, we go back to the blog talk radio days when it was strictly a podcast. Um, and now we have both. So people may listen to this, you know, through any of their podcast uh, opportunities, you know, iTunes or whatever. But we're also going to have the availability of video uh, on our business page and Facebook and LinkedIn and all kinds of other places. So it's exciting to be here. Um, it's wonderful that we are relaunching this. As Deb mentioned, my name is Lisa Kanda, the co-host of Business Dig. My company is LK Advisors. And what I do is I help solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, small business owners uh, up their game when it comes to using social media and digital tools. Uh, so that they can get results and they can get new business. That's the bottom line. We want you to be successful. And I love it when I dig in and I figure things out. And that's what Deb and I do really well together, which is why we're relaunching this. Because when we do that, we find that people who follow what we do learn something and sometimes get those big aha moments, which is really fun. So I'm really excited to be here. I think... Um, we're going to see how it goes. So we're, we're thrilled that you're joining us. We hope you're watching. Let us know if you are. Let us know if you find what we are doing really interesting or have some suggestions for us because we're kind of just getting rolling with it and have some ideas, but we're always looking for yours. Uh, we did pick a topic for today to, to uh, talk about. So let's get started with that because I think uh, it's really pertinent to what's happening today. What do you think, Deb? Oh, absolutely. And, and of course, it's 2020, and we're in the midst of some extraordinary times, sometimes challenging, sometimes uh, interesting, but it has all driven us to do different things in our lives than we were used to and changing up some things that we notice about ourselves, especially uh, many of us who are telecommuting, who are actually doing using video tools and, and uh, conferencing tools now. We're changing things to make sure that we can do our business. So it is an interesting time. It, the most courageous among us are getting out here and putting our face uh, frozen electronically, <laughs> if you will. It's, a, it's a, an interesting time for all of us. And as you and I were talking earlier, it, it is one of those things where you're very self-aware and um, we have some habits of communicating they're having to change. And I think that's the, the big aha that I see right now is that we're changing the way we communicate and we're going to be talking about our habits and uh, how you how you actually change a habit and create a new habit, um, making your life a little bit more interesting with business. And we're certainly changing some platforms here. Something yeah. that I want to bring up is that Lisa and I've been together for 10 years we, can you believe it, Lisa? Yeah, as colleagues, by the way. No, we're yeah. not together. It's actually in <laughs> Illinois, and I'm in Savannah, Georgia now. So we're colleagues, <laughs> uh, partners in business. At, um, yes. And we had it, we, the, more than 10 years. I think we met 12 years ago. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. Um, and and uh, 
here it is. We've done this. We've done the show. We have actually four years of uh, blog talk radio experience in the blog talk days, and we have a lot of um, radio shows in the can uh, archived for mm -hmm. our program, and we had some fun guests. And during that time, of course, um, we kind of expanded our horizons in terms of how to interview people and how to display our best selves on the internet and mm -hmm. uh, connect with folks. So we, we certainly understand the challenges. We understand what business people are going through. And sometimes they don't have uh, the time, business owners don't have the time to research these tools and research new ways of doing things. So we're here to help with that. And uh, implementation as we're doing now can be rather daunting. So yeah. hopefully yeah. we can help some folks do that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and let's talk about habits because yeah. that was one of the topics when we were throwing around what would be a good topic to start with. And one of the things that I is we mentioned, uh, you know, new habits are forming as far as how we even communicate and socialize. Uh, we don't, you know, I think I'm a, I'm a look at my calendar over here. I am in day 49 of quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it's definitely having an impact on all of us. And what I, we want to kind of share with you and go through is what habits are, as, as you mentioned, and, and then take it from there. So I, one of the things, one of the people I follow, let's back up, and I have my notes down here so I don't misspeak, uh, James Clear, who is the author of Atomic Habits. It's a great book if you haven't read it. Um, I go back to some of the things he's saying about habits, but one of the um, areas I wanted to start with first is the myth that it takes 21 days to form a habit. Right, you, you're, you've heard that, right, Deb? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it's ingrained in us that we think that's what it takes, and it's not, it's not true. Um, but there's a way that came about, so can I share that story? Yes, absolutely, I, please. I wanna uh, just give quickly give you why do we say that? Well, Dr. Maxwell Maltz, I'm reading, who's a plastic surgeon, I had no idea, I just read this. Um, it was actually in Atomic Habits, but I looked it back up again. Uh, Dr. Maltz, a uh, plastic surgeon in 1950s, began noticing a strange pattern upon his patients, okay? So like if uh, he performed a nose job, he found that it took a patient about 21 days to get used to seeing their new face. So long story short is he was observing this behavior and so he was saying that there was this 21 days before you adjusted to a new situation. Well, he took that and he wrote about these experiences in a book called Psycho Cybernetics. And in the book, he published that, you know, it takes 21 days for an old mental image to dissolve and a new one to gel. That's what he said. 21 days for an old mental image to dissolve and a new one to gel. But here's where the problem started. The gurus of the time, I'm gonna get my rest of my notes, such as Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, when they read that, it got shortened, okay, to it takes 21 days to form a habit. So he never said that. But you know how we selectively hear things sure. and then we make the, it's like the old the, the phone telephone where, you know, you, you start changing it. Well, it got changed. Mm -hmm. So the research and the work, some of the things behind it were valid for what he was looking at. But clearly, here we are today, 21 days to form a habit. Not true. No. That's not the reality in any way, right? So, what did you did you ever have the experience where you thought it was, or you work with a lot of clients uh, who have this? And what's your re interaction with people when they talk about their habits? And well, it's very interesting that you mention that we hear what we want to hear, or we hear what we think we hear. We kind of form that in our brain. What I have heard from some clients is that that is so locked in. That 21 days is so locked in that it's actually creating fear among some business people. That uh, some of the business owners are saying, oh my gosh, they've gotten used to not coming into my restaurant. They've gotten used to, we've been in here a lot longer than 21 days. They won't come into the bank lobby anymore. They won't come into my store anymore. They'll just order online. And there is, it's actually creating some resistance to embrace technology for ordering things, for buying things, because they're afraid that after this is over, 
after that 21 days, or in, in this case, 40 plus days in, in your case, um, that people will be out of the habit of shopping with them. Right. And, that, and it's, it's, an odd, it's an odd result. Uh, what I know as a coach, as a business coach, 21 days is foo-wee. You do <laughs> not change your habits in 21 days. You may listen to your harpy coach, Deb Fry, and you may uh, try to do some of those things that she encourages you to do for 21 days. But the reality is if it doesn't become your lifestyle, if it does not be, it's just like, um, well, I'll use a really good example, physical fitness. If it does not become your physical lifestyle, where you get up in your morning routine, your personal habits of eating breakfast or drinking coffee or sleeping, 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 which is a lot of what people are doing now because they have to get up so early when they're going to the office. Uh, but if you don't integrate, oh gosh, you know, I've got a 30 minutes, I need to work out or I need to meditate, I need to do something physical for my body. Um, if you don't create that habit that, oh, it's 7.15, I need to work out then you won't create that lifestyle. So if you do at 7.15 every day, you stop what you're doing and you work out for 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever is your pattern for exercise. After so many weeks, it may become a lifestyle as long as it's not interrupted. When it's interrupted, if it has become part of your lifestyle, you think, ah, oh, 7.15, I'm supposed to be doing something. And your body will tell you, hey, get up, move around, do something. Exactly. Yeah. That, and that's when you know the habit set in. Like, and yeah. when I, the research I was reading was, yeah, you, you can miss a few days and the you can still form the habit, but it doesn't happen as fast as you think. So what ends up happening is, I think to your point, like I, I love the example you gave of the business owners uh, and restaurants who are afraid people aren't going to come back. Yeah. But the other part of it is that we also have the expectations on ourselves that are totally unrealistic oh, yeah. that we think in 21 days we start beating ourselves up if we didn't do it so it, it really goes both ways i i, I truly think it's, it's a, a interesting phenomenon of how to look at it because i actually didn't even think about it from a business owner who was in a restaurant or a service that is waiting for people to come back yes. and mm -hmm. and i think it, you're absolutely correct that it's not really habit forming of some of the things that people are doing because they will shift back to the other way. Uh, maybe all, some things won't change, but that's different than creating a pattern of behavior that is uh, consistent. Uh, I think you can't miss a few days, but then here's what um, James uh, Clear says. Because I, I want there's a this uh, a step by step process that builds a habit. The cue the craving, the response, and the reward. And you mentioned that when you said, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? That's the craving. Mm -hmm. So you set up cues, 7.15, exercise. Uh, and you can do different cues depending on what the habit is you're trying to form. Mm -hmm. If you do it enough, it becomes a craving, right? I know I should be doing this. And then the response, you did it. Yeah, you, you know, and the body feels good and that's the reward. So there, you know, that, that there's just four things that happen for, and then that repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and enough times and okay, the habits there. Uh, it's really important that we recognize that that's what you need to look for. Uh, for and you need to set them up. You need to set up the cue so that you do it and you need to set up the reward uh, at the end. So sometimes the reward is a, a, a little something that you get. Yeah, Eventually yeah. what the response and the reward will be is that either you're physically fit or other things will come right. in play longer right. term. But uh, I thought that was really interesting. Uh, Dr. Charles you know. Duhigg did a great study on habits. And if you've ever got, that's D-U-H-I-G-G, -G, did a great study on habits and how we create habits and the psycho psychology behind why we develop habits. And he brought up something that <laughs> just sort of mundane, but it's a very interesting why many of us are compelled to brush our teeth. And the very reason that toothpaste has flavoring is to encourage us to brush our teeth. I did hear that. It's been quite some time. <laughs> That's right. I remember the studies behind that and the reason why they did that. Yes. Yes. 
and it's you know that and it's kind of a built-in it's obviously the i need that peppermint sweet great taste in my mouth whatever flavor i could i think they have all kinds of flavors of toothpaste now <laughs> but uh and then of course the the reward of having nice clean fresh teeth and your mouth feels fresh and clean but the body to for for our minds to crave to brush our teeth comes from the desire to have that minty fresh feeling in our mouth. It is. You're right. It's so true because you don't feel like your mouth is clean. You know, it could be clean if you just brush them, right? A little oh, baking yeah. soda, but yeah. it doesn't have the same impact if you. So that's a great study. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> totally forgot about that. Awesome. Yeah. Duhigg's book, he, his original book on habits is, I don't know, about 750 pages long. So it's very intimidating for a lot of people to read. But if you want to catch up on Duhigg's studies on habits, and I know he was the platform, uh, one of the seminal researchers on creating habits and what habits actually are, be great to read for somebody to go out there and look on the internet, Duhigg, D-U-H-I-G-G. -G, and he has done a lot of great writings on why we are creating habits. And I, and I have to say that habits are one thing, but lifestyle's another. And it, it's a, not a quantum leap to create a lifestyle from a habit, but it, but it does require commitment. And a lot of people can create a habit for a little while, but to make it part of their lives from, from here on out is another thing. People will people will create new habits. We are creating some right now that will become part of our lifestyles as we get back into business. A lot of businesses are opening up today in my home state here in Illinois. Um, but they'll be opening with criteria, right? The golf courses will be opening up today, but there's criteria. Uh, they, they won't require masks on the golf course, but guess what? You and your buddy have to use separate carts or walk the course and uh, none of this high five and handshaking. You just Isn't go. That not the hardest. Nope. I think the hardest thing for me is when I go out that you you see someone you know and you automatically go to and you have to like stop. It's like, but yeah, it's a it's a new habit. New, you know, yeah, new, and eventually it's go. not a habit for me yet because I guess I'm not in not seeing enough people out yet. I'm still, but I, you're right. I am. Um, there's some different criteria and uh, interesting observation. Thank you. I I think. Um, we want to definitely ask our listeners, uh, and if you're watching us, of course, because now we have both, uh, to let us know what's going on in their lives when it comes to maybe habit forming or what they think about creating new habits, what, what's been going on the last month or two, depending on how long they've been quarantined and how much longer they may need to be, because yeah. it's so different uh, for each place, wherever you live. Uh, in the States or in the world, honestly, because yes. we're all going through this pandemic in so many different levels. But I think I, I'd love to hear from anyone who watches or listens to this, uh, their take on habits and their yeah. take on maybe in the past, how they were able to form a habit uh, and how that's influenced their lifestyle and become a part of it, or what's happened in the last few months for them that they are going to take with them past you know, because things will get better. Things, you know, this is not forever. <laughs> it's hard for us sometimes to realize that um, this is not forever. Uh, clearly, it's going to be different and uh, we'll all be changed from it in some way, but life's going to go back to whatever mm -hmm. that is. And I think we're bringing something to it. And I think there's a lot of positive that's going to oh, come I think, from this. I definitely think so. And I, you know, I mentioned to you earlier in our conversation that as we were working on some research about this conversation, uh, it brought to mind about what creating new habits can do for us. And I thought of the, one of my favorite authors, I'll hold up the book here. It's called Roger Van Oaks, A Kick in the Seat in the Pants. And, and the, kick in the, the kick in the seat of the pants really focuses on, hey, what's happened to you? Where's your entrepreneur? Where's your creativeness? Where's your artistic side? Um, where are where are those things that you that prompted you to get into business in the first place? This is the, these creating of new habits and how we um, are changing uh, to help each other more is a way to give us that proverbial kick in the seat of the pants to get out of ourselves a little bit and think very creatively about how we're going to do business 
and how we're going to help each other and encourage each other and cheer each other on that creativity that you need and also the warmth that you need towards your business community to help them. Not everybody's ready for this change. None of us really were ready for this kind of a change. So if this is happening to you out there, we'd love to hear what are your new habits that you have created and um, are you doing things differently from there here on out with your schedules? Uh, how do you discipline yourself so that you actually do get into a new rhythm that's gonna fit for you? We'd love to hear about those things. Yeah, I just wanna know what some of the challenges are because what, you know, again, back to uh, James Clear, you know, some things he mentioned uh, in the research is that, you know, I, we mentioned earlier, missing one opportunity to perform a behavior does not necessarily affect the habit formation. So if you miss, and you're not as consistent. You need consistency, but if you miss once, it's, you know, um, yeah. people tend to beat themselves up. Do not do that. You don't have to be perfect. So as you're moving through this, accept, you know, and I think honestly for me, even especially what's happened now, I have much more grace with myself as well as other people. So have that grace with yourself. Don't beat yourself up. You don't have to be perfect. And third, and this was a uh, keying back to the circle back all the way around, embracing longer timelines can help us realize that habits are a process and not an event. Yes. So what we're going through in some way could be an event, <laughs> mm -hmm. but the mm -hmm. habit's a process. Yeah. Um, yeah. So just wanted to share that for anybody, you know, have some grace with yourself. Don't have to be perfect. It takes a lot longer than you think. That's right. And embrace it and uh, set those cues in place and set those uh, things that'll help you reward yourself so that you continue the consistency because that's really the key thing. And you can help people um, to develop new habits. And I, I know that uh, as business owners, we like to help people embrace new ideas. And I know you, you and I, Lisa, we like to bring new stuff to the table all the time. But someone may say that's a great idea, but they're not necessarily ready to try it. And this may be the time where many of us find that um, explorer in all of us to find out what's Love the that. best thing. Love you know, that. That. Awesome. I'm, I'm all about my, the mayor of my hometown, and I'll give a shout out to Will. He did, a, uh, a, he said a great thing to a lot of the business owners in my hometown. It's a little bitty town folks in Illinois. You wouldn't know it, but Murfreesboro, Illinois. And they've done a lot of super things to uh, get started. And he's, he talked about May momentum. Ooh, a I lot like of that. the businesses are opening. So, Will, thank you for that term. And I think we're going to have to interject that for a lot of folks. I in the like next that. Oh, well, maybe we'll have to jump on that for an, our next show. <laughs> May <Yeah>. momentum. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want to hear from all of our guests. We want we want to know what you'd like us to dig for you. Yeah, for sure. Well, this has been so much fun. I really enjoyed doing yep. this. It, it is our, like we said, our inaugural getting back to uh, getting on air because we did it for a long time. And yep. we got, came back uh, through our conversations with what's going on in the world and thought this would be valuable. I found it valuable. I, just the digging, like I said, made me go through and, and find some things that I had tucked away that I remembered, but not yeah. necessarily ha didn't have present. So that That's was right. really fun to be able to do that. So um, I appreciate that opportunity. And I can't wait to see what we do next. <laughs> Absolutely. I do want to remind folks, if you have a topic you'd like us to dig for you, or if you have a guest to, to suggest, or you'd like to be a guest on our show, uh, we'd love to get some feedback from all of you and you can get a hold of us at businessdig at gmail.com or facebook.com forward slash businessdig. You can private message us there or put commentary up there. We'd love to hear from you. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that kind of is a wrap, don't you think? <laughs> it sounds like a wrap to me. Well, thank you everyone for your time. It was awesome to be here. Deb, great to see you. It was you really too. awesome. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye. Bye.